that if you want to love yourself, you've got to love yourself. You've got to say it. Right, you have to just say, I'm enough, I matter. I'm enough, I'm lovable. I matter. I'm great I'm lovable. Bed. I really know how to shag. I live in an abundant world. I live in an abundant world. My world is abundant. It's just so soft and, and abundant. Right at the end. Friends. Abundant. Like the whole time she talks is just like very abundant. 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 And relaxing. Love. She constantly puts you into a hypnosis state right away. Right away. Just from speaking between speak. the beats. It literally works. Close your eyes. You can't open your eyes. When she said the three things things that were necessary in a relationship how did you process that were you like oh my god I had all three or were you like oh that that's why <sighs> that's that really interesting and that's also question? like kind of Australian you're doing oh, yeah sorry yeah about that. What's, what's that about I don't know <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> what know. are you saying mate I remember thinking you know okay I got it down there's some sexual chemistry I got the best friend part mm. I got the respect sometimes Mm. Although I will say in the beginning, I was like, get a job. And get then once job. he did, the respect levels went up and guess what? So did the sexual well chemistry. And so <laughs> did the friendship. So we, we were talking. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Hey. So we guess were, who? Guess who? <laughs> guess the fuck who, who is else? back? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go again. Shit. Nobody else everybody. will come on. <laughs> <laughs> she has other guests, but I say, can I take their spot? Yeah. And then I pay Laura yes. money to be she, here. Yeah, exactly. And then we have the, it's funny because it's like a practical joke. We have the other guests arrive and then I go, just kidding. Get the fuck out of my house. It's Manon And time. then Manon comes out from out the bush with her with baby bush? belly. Oh. With her bush, with out, bush out as well. And she's and like, just hump the air. yeah, and she's like, excuse me, I'm the guest. And then we just send whoever home, home with Postmates. Yeah, with Postmates. Gift cards from Gift Postmates. Cards. Yeah, but no podcast. I'm sorry for your. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you imagine if we actually did that? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I think it, we would do it one time and realize, you know, I feel bad. I think we have you and I would feel bad. We oh, absolutely. It would be funny. It'd be funny to see you come out with a bush. Yeah, that part. You're going to get to the point, by where the way, where you cannot see your vagina. I'm almost there. I felt like I had to really, really? look. Because, yeah, you're going to look down and where'd just it go? Look. Wow. And then what do I do? You just go, vagina. Yeah. Vagina. Yeah. I'm still here. Where are you? I'm right down here where I always am. Are you okay? I'm feeling good. You seem lonely down there. I'm lonely, but, um, you know, sometimes I have friends come and visit me, and it's really fun. Okay. Like your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Dick. <laughs> oh. I like your vagina. <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you next time. See you next time. I'll see you at the birth. And everyone will Whoa. be terrified because I'm ripping open. <gasps> no, we're not going to manifest we're gonna that. We're that. not going to manifest gonna that. Easy, effortless breath. I mean, birth. Women are meant to. The by the way, Marissa, if you're watching this, we're open. not making fun of you. We love you so much. No, we just do impressions. We because love. That's how we process information. Doing impressions. In order for me to really feel the fullness, I have yes. to embody we, the people. I just had Marissa appear on the podcast, who's a world renowned therapist and best-selling author and hypnotist hypnotist and i really am so glad that i came by to see the tail end yes of that yeah hypnotist hip you know i thought it was hypnotist rapid oh. speed what i thought it was pronounced hypnotist hypnotist no n so i learned that yesterday. yesterday hip you thought it was hypnotist hip hypnotist mm. you never like looked at the word or Mm -mm. But you know what? I am smart. You are smart. I'm, I'm intelligent. Capable. I'm capable. Worthy. I'm worthy. I'm significant. I'm significant. That's so her whole thing is about the power of your thoughts, how powerful your thoughts are. Because people don't really realize your thoughts make up your reality. Not thoughts and then the, the actions and the behavior. And, and if you don't have the thought, then you can't if, have the feeling. If your thought is I'm not enough, 
What's the behaviour going to be? Mm. I feel rubbish. So you just got to flip it. I am enough. And then what's your behaviour going to be? I'm brave. I'm I can capable. I'm capable. I can do it. Horny. I'm turned on. I'm turned on. I could use a few fingers. Could you Sorry, know? I don't know what this <laughs> finger is. <laughs> Man, it just keeps bringing it back to her fingers. <laughs> You don't? You don't even do that? I don't know. I don't want to We already had a sex podcast. We did. We, we really went there. It. It we just, went we went there. We really, really went there. How do you feel about I that? I feel good. I feel like we really went there and I feel like it took a lot of courage and bravery. I actually feel like sexually liberated since that conversation. More compelled to to initiate. Yeah. So oh, do you? Yeah, That's really I helpful then. Do. I so did you get to practice did. that this week? I actually did. I expressed myself and it was really, really nice well, and liberating. Well, wow. Yeah. It's like, amazing. what about you? I didn't get to practice that. How come? Um, fear. Fear. Fear of what? That's not true. I actually said to the partner, I was like, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> that was your... Actually, yeah. I would said, I don't remember. You went like this. Was, did you go... <laughs> It's time. It's time. Let's go lay down. <laughs> and then we turn on bliss lights. No. And then we it's just we look to each other. It's time, That sounds like there's a war coming. Like it's time. What? It's. It's time. I might have said something else. I can't remember what I said yesterday <laughs> or right now. Preggy brain. Okay. Okay. It's time. I don't know what I said. Roll the clip. <laughs> We filmed it. Um, wow, that's great. You did it too? It's you got to practice. I got to practice, yeah. Did you? How, I ha well, like? first I had a full anxiety attack. Mm. Um, or an excitement attack. Oh my God. Or an excitement experience. Let's go there. I so, had an excitement experience. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cause we, we talked a lot about sex in the last, last podcast. We really did. We went to town. Now. And then we went to town. And then we went to town. But that wasn't the first time. That we went to town? No, remember we went into Brentwood? <laughs> hmm? Huh? What, what are you saying? What are you saying? Only the audience knows. Guys, wait, when do we go to Brentwood? Remember? We, well, you thought we were going to, first of all, Coral Tree. Oh. And then La Pen Paraven. Lip, lip. But that wasn't Brentwood. That no. That was Westwood. Yeah, that's a great story. So we've been to town a few times. We've been to town, yeah. We went to lunch. Okay. <laughs> Man is just like bringing everything back to her fingers. <laughs> and I don't. I love pregnant Manon. Oh. You, your energy is really fun. Thanks. Yeah. Like you have a, what's the word, jovial? Is that how you say it? A like jovial laugh. Yeah, like Santa Claus? Is it jovial? You're like jo jovial. I don't know what that is. Jovial? I know it feels if I keep, jovial. I keep thinking Santa Claus. Dude, am I saying it wrong? Jolly. <coughs> jovial definition. Jubient. Cheerful and friendly. Jovial. Aww. You have a jovial laugh. You have a jovial vagina. A jovial vagina. <laughs> a happy and cheer friendly vagina. Yeah. Actually, yes. I would say hardcore yes. But dude, we are ADDing it all over the place. So. We were just talking because Marissa Peer, this amazing woman, came and she was teaching us all about the power of our thoughts. And oh, sorry. Oh my God. Chris is like, I'm doing sound. You just killed me. Um, and I just feel like my life is changed. Because she hypnotized you. Yeah, she hypnotized me. For those of you who don't know, um, hypnosis works. Do it. Dude, so you've done it like hundreds of yeah. times. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well that's to me that is what changed my life a long ass time ago and continues to i like work with a hypnotist all the time because <laughs> i want to change all my unconscious beliefs so that they're more positive and then i can achieve my dreams so you're telling me you've been hypnotized 
hundreds of times. Probably at this point, it's been 10 years. And were they all effective? Uh, I think so. When's the last time you've been hypnotized? Two weeks ago. Tell me about that. Yes, two weeks ago. I was working on, let's see, I don't know, just to feel more joy in the world. And it look, it worked because of the jovial. I'm telling you, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You've been so jovial. You've been so jovial. Like just being around because that's what I wanted in the hypnosis. Show. And the guy's like, you're going to be jovial. Seriously? He's Irish. Seriously? No. Wait, was that all a lie? No, I was hypnotized two weeks ago, okay? But not by an Irish guy and you didn't ask to be jovial? No. Okay, but what uh, was it? I did ask like for like, can I just please like believe that I can do more in this pregnancy? Because I'm starting to really sink into thinking that I'm supposed to just be laying down and I'd really like to do a little bit more. And okay. so he took me under, similarly to you, except I didn't do any sort of like tricks. Yeah. But um, I've done so many stuff things with him. I went into like um, <clears throat> my allergies and what was crazy is we went all the way back to a past life where I had a vision he said, just so you know, sometimes allergies are physical things. Sometimes you might, when we ask to go back, because you have, you have to go back to the place where it started, right? Where the thing started. Sometimes the thing started before birth. What? And he says, whether you believe this or not, I don't even know if I believe it. Sometimes people <laughs> The hypnotist is like, I don't actually believe this shit. I don't like, know. Come don't on. quote Past me. I don't life, know how But anyway, that'll be $200 and <laughs> look, I don't believe it. <laughs> I love that your hypnotist is like, I don't fucking believe in this shit, but just look at the clock. Look at the, look at this thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is it, this isn't really working, but just <laughs> see if you want to believe. Yeah. So, but so, 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 so he was like, I don't necessarily believe like in the that. past I'm life, like, but if you want to go there. He just says, sometimes when I work with people, people will tell me something that actually didn't happen. Be, but it feels like it happened to them and some people would call this past lives like there's a book called pa uh, many lives many masters about women who are like oh my god i have this weird thing on my throat and i get so scared of drowning and it's like like she did nothing happen in this life with her drowning but in a past life she drowned and had that whole vision and had to clear it up and if you clear it in your past life then you are you so bored no <laughs> but i was just having this conversation with someone is it rude to yawn it's not it's not. It's a it's lack not. of oxygen to the brain, but somehow it's rude if I it's yawn. It's not rude. But it I've is to people. It, well, no, but... so Wouldn't you say a lot of people think it's rude? I don't know what they think. I would say this is what I do. I'm yawning. By the way, I'm yawning because I'm just processing. Because I think it's processing. You think it's lack of oxygen. I don't know. I you think were literally like a woman drowned, and I was like... <sighs> yeah, or what the, those people that try to cover their yawn. Yeah. And I just let mine go. Yeah, yes. I let mine go too because because you, you shouldn't know. try to. First of all, I know you're yawning, so don't try to hide it from me. I'm not gonna try and hide my yawn. And if I don't think it's rude, then maybe you won't think it's rude. Literally, because yeah. you know what? It's not rude. It's not. It's a rude. lack of oxygen yeah. to the brain, and somehow people think, oh, it's rude. If you yawn, I must be boring. No, it's it's yeah. I just lack said that of for comedic effect. I don't actually think you don't actually it was think boring. that. No, I. What just do you guys said think about yawning? Because I know that that's the general thing. Yeah, write it in the comments. Yeah, what do you guys think about What's yawning? Do you think opinion? it do you think it's rude if someone yawns while you're in the middle of a story about someone drowning and you yawn? Is that rude? I think here's what I think yawning is, is you're processing information. You have to go. <laughs> now that's rude. What? No, no, Checking that I was looking phone? at my phone. Because it just yeah, that there was a, that was rude. That was cunty. But I could make it mean that you are really just making sure that you're managing our time well. You know what? It's all about perspective, people. Ooh, I it's love that. It's the story that. you create about the thing. It's never the thing. It's Marissa the story just said you that. create about the thing. The fact is, here's what happened. You looked at your phone. I made it mean I'm not enough. If I were just more exuberant, then she would pay attention to me. No, that's false. That's a story I made up. I could also say, oh, she checked her phone because she's managing the time. She really cares. Something. Ooh, I like that story. But do you want to know the truth? ADD. It popped. There was a oh. notification. It was my like Google Home thing popped up, and I just turned by instinct to go like, what was well, it? Well, it's the, a flashing did light. Did the kid come? Flashing light. It's not. You're not. Uh, you are only so. We all are like uh, computers that are like excited by light. 
So anytime anyone sees light, no one's immune to being like, I don't see the light. I don't see it. So that's why it's better to just put your phone away. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I like I'm kidding. It. You can keep it out. Okay. I'm not offended. I'm unoffendable. I feel like we try offend me. I gotta say, I f your boobs are getting bigger every week. It's, There's no bra. It's actually unsettling. Really? There's no bra. Get out of here. Yeah. Is it trippy how massive your boobies are? Um, they don't feel big anymore because I feel like I got used to them. I, th I actually think they got smaller. I'm telling you, they're massive. Okay. You have massive milk wagons. But the thing is, no one's ever said that before. You didn't. That's what I'm saying. Because you it's never have so had massive milk wagons. Yeah, I saw a video of me the other day and I was like, why are you so small? She's so small. I never thought of myself as small before until now because I'm bigger. And I look back and I'm like, she was flat. Totally. But lovingly flat. Lovingly flat. You could go oh, horseback riding and it doesn't even hurt. No, flat. now I'm like, oof. Now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Marissa, can we just make her our Lord and Savior? Sure. We, she has a lot of free content out there to watch. <laughs> Anyone can listen to her as they go to bed and change their life. You don't have to be suffering. It's you're choosing it. <laughs> Can we a just... lot of people don't like that, though. Don't like what? <laughs> if I said, oh. if someone's like, you're choosing to suffer. That's hard because I do think, and I actually meant to ask her about this. Like. I understand that our thoughts are powerful and they can help create our reality. And I do believe that and change our behavior and change our feelings. Our thoughts are so powerful. I, there's kind of no arguing that. Yeah, of course. But then you see like what's going on in... <laughs> in where? In, in Palestine, mm -hmm. like Let's that. Talk about that. <laughs> on this funny podcast. Just, it's like so devastating and disturbing. I would say they're all programmed, like, in a very negative way. Mm. Right? Like, to them, I, who did I hear? Someone was brilliant. It was like, every person who's doing something bad underneath it thinks it's good. Ooh. Evil people think that they're doing good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. So they're not like, I'm evil and yeah, they're like, no, this is for the good. Right. And they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. It's horrific. It's horrific. It's very sad. If we could all just get hypnotized from a young age by Marissa Peer <laughs> and just have self-esteem, we wouldn't need to harm other people yeah. to make ourselves feel more powerful. A lot of people think that, like a lot of people in the hypnosis world don't like when people say, oh, I'm an alcoholic. They hate it. That was another thing I wanted to talk about and forgot. So what are your thoughts on that? I have a couple. Tell well, me. Being someone that has been in 12-step programs for a long time, I love 12-step pro programs. It's called program. So you are going there to reprogram your mind from having a dangerous neighborhood that needed to drink, and then you're getting sober, and, and you're going into these meetings, and you're reprogramming the, the mind, and you're getting a new way of life. So in some ways, that is what the program is right? So that's yes. good. Yes. I love it. It helped change my life. It helped be a gateway for all these other beautiful learnings. I think it's funny because when I started learning NLP or neuro-linguistic programming, I would go to these meetings and I would hear people, I, I learned a lot. I learned about like how it's really important to state things that you want to stop doing in past tense. So like if I keep saying, yeah, I just overeat all the time. I'm an overeater. I'm an overeater. My unconscious that's a five-year-old is going to produce me being one. It's going to go, mm. okay, well, I'm listening to what you're telling me, right? But if I say I used to be, yeah. even if used to is a second ago, it's still in the past. I'm giving my unconscious a moment to be different. Oh, if I used to be, well, when I'm, what am I now? And what I am now could be completely different. Right. And so if I make that the familiar thing, I used to be, used to be, used to be, and it's like used to be was 30. If I go 30 days saying I used to be, I get further and further from what, right? So wow. there's so much power in that. I remember I would go to meetings and I would hear people say, you know, 
whatever. I love alcohol and they haven't had a drink in 20 years. And I remember being like, this is so interesting to have these two viewpoints of like, I get why we're all identifying. Yeah. Because we have to say, we have to say, I belong here. I belong in my seat and I'm connected to you, really. It's a, it's a really good way to connect. Mm. To be like, oh, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm Laura for and I'm an alcoholic is a good way to connect. To anyone, really. Yeah, yeah. That's Your how kids, I introduce myself your to family. my kids at Trader Joe's. Trader when Joe's. I'm in line, I'm Laura, I'm an alcoholic. How much and would that they, be? You, oh, you're ringing them up? Yes. Oh, how much would that be? Yeah. Yeah, I like to ask. And they them. say, "I'm Janine. I'm work here. I work here." And it's sixty-two ninety-eight. Eight. And you're like, "I'm an alcoholic." And I'm like, and they're like, "Okay." Do you, and I'm like, "Do you have a burning desire?" Which is what you people say at the end of meetings for those that you know. Aren't for those of you normies out there who don't need to go to special problems meetings. You think you're better than us? You probably are. So I, because I combated with this with someone, a hypnotist recently, they said, I don't think it's good that people say I'm an alcoholic. And I'll say, I think it is okay. And here's why. Because the people that are sitting there that mm. are recovered are always going to be sitting across from someone that has one day. And if the one day doesn't trust that they're on the same wavelength, they are going to leave. It's Whoa. not so much for the person. I think it's mostly for the new people. They need to feel safe. They need to feel like they're in the right place, that they're not going to be judged. That's why therapy can be different because there's these hierarchies. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're this little experiment. But if you come in and you start hearing like, oh, they are too. Oh, and they identify. Yes. Not to mention, not everybody has NLP in 20 years of programming and learning about the unconscious mind. Some people have no idea what the heck we're talking about. So this is a beautiful starting place for people to go and start to learn about the dis-ease and the discomfort that alcohol can cause a person. Whoa. And like, so I actually think it's okay that we say it. Okay, but, but, a, but a hypnotist... That being said, I was. I'm not anymore. <laughs> You're not okay with saying it. I'm, I'm okay with saying it in the tone of the meetings. Yeah, but to like... But to myself, do I say, I'm an alcoholic? No. So do you think... I, because... Oh, sorry. Because what? Tell me. Well, because I want to protect my unconscious mind. And if, if for some reason I drink again, I don't want the belief that it will that I will drink alcoholically. Holy shit. So it's, so it's like an insurance for later, but it's, I'm still identifying the rooms because I know what, they're, what they mean by it. You know what they mean. You're not, okay, I, I see what you're saying here. This is so- I hope this doesn't get me in a lot of- No, okay. no, because this is just your thought and it's not, you're not- I'm not right, I don't know. Yeah, I'm you're not telling anyone how to think or how to feel. And like okay. anyone else in recovery, you know, comment below or, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion and feelings and thoughts, and this is just yours. And I'm intrigued by it. It's really interesting because, and remember too, like in that 12 step program, it was written by two men who had been sober. One was like six months or something. And one was two years or something like that. They, they weren't even sober that long. And they wrote this thing that they were like, here's a suggestion. This worked for us. Yeah. It's not like, it, yes, yeah. and, and it does work, and it's worked for millions. It's, but it's worked for millions. Yes, and exactly. And it will continue working for millions yes. because it's just a much power greater than anyone. You know, there's people around there trying to take down AA because they whatever, and it pisses me off because I'm like, AA is helping millions of people. But they're, they're saying, well, the statistics aren't working. It's like, no, you're, you're doing a statistic of one person walking in and walking out. Mm. Like, that's not a statistic. Do yeah. this, take the statistic after a person has actually been sober for long enough and done the steps and then, and then make that part of the statistic. Right? Yeah, they have you to can't actually say the gym work doesn't the program. Work. Yes, because there's so much of the program. They're like, but I signed up for the gym, but you've never walked Did in. Did you it. walk in and take yeah. any classes? Yeah. Then you can't say that gyms don't work. But so, so to say I am an alcoholic is then essentially affirming that I have this disease. So that's really interesting. So do you feel like once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic? No. Interesting. No. What would I know? Why would I know that? But so in your experience, because I think for me, right, I haven't had a drink in 12 years. Crazy. It's amazing. Uh, it's 
thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. But, but I, you know, I know that, and are you okay talking about? Okay. You have been out since I've known you. Out, by out, she means I've tested alcohol again. Yes. And she, mushrooms. And she's gay. <laughs> and I'm gay? Well, you went, you came out. Oh, I came Kidding. out. Yes, yeah. I'm also gay. Right. So, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, only with Laura. <laughs> Cats out of the bag! No, dude, we're just kidding. We're kidding. We're literally we're kidding. We've literally, we've no, done, we're we've literally kidding. Like, we've never literally <laughs> done remember. anything. Like, we've never, never done, no, like, we have not, not done ever, done. no, like, don't even. There wasn't even, hasn't it yet even been a moment. Have we done? Let alone, have we ever, do, like, <laughs> scissored? Never this has never about it. happened. Nor what? <laughs> don't literally, make it weird. What, don't make it, why are you guys making it weird right now? Like, nothing has happened. Happy. Like, literally, <laughs> stop. You guys, stop. <laughs> Nothing, no. Stop it. We did not, no we did not. We didn't. No we did not last Thursday I at 9 p.m. Why would you say that? Laura. Why would that you say it that? really obvious. Oh, see. Nine. Obvious that we're friends. That we're friends. That we're friends. <laughs> friends watch movies together. And heterosexual relationships. <laughs> Cause we love men. I love men. We love them. They're, They're not trash. They're not, what? No we didn't. They're not gonna think this. <laughs> what is so funny? <sighs> Nothing happened. What? What? We. 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 Like, yeah, like when you when I drink again. Yeah, like when you went out and drank again. Like, how was that for it you? It was like, fun, dude. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I had a great time. Oh no, you don't want to hear that. It was really devastating. <sighs> no, <laughs> but like for real. What, I, what do you want to actually know? I genuinely want to know. Like, did you feel the? Because they say like alcohol. Okay, we have one more minute. Do we just stop here? Because I'm going to ask a question and then you're going to have a long, long answer. Sorry. This podcast is sponsored by AG1, y'all. AG1 is an amazing green supplement. I take it every single morning. It's packed with 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole source food ingredients. Y'all, it's completely vegan. It helps with gut health, energy, hair, nails, strengthens your immune system. It's all your vitamins and minerals all in one drink. You just take a scoop, put it in the cup, mix it around, squeeze a little lemon in there. I like to, and it tastes so good. If you order it through me, just go to drinkag1.com slash idiot. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash idiot. And you can get a year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs. Y'all, it's your nutritional insurance. I love it. And I know that you will too. So, so I was curious, what was uh, it like drinking again? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What was it like? Because they say alcoholism is this twofold disease, right? So you have First of all, it's a disease. There's an obsession of the mind and an allergy of the body. So do you feel that the obsession was released when you drank? When um, you went out? And how long had you been sober when you? The f I had five years. Okay. And at this point, my life was completely different than when I walked in and first got sober, 23 years old, I had learned a lot about hypnosis and reprogrammed so much of my unconscious mind that I'd be sitting in meetings and going, oof, more than one? Who would have more than one? And I never had that thought before. Before it was like, I want all of the alcohol, I want all of the sugar, I want all or nothing. But I was hypnotized many times, and all of a sudden I'm like, oof, more than one, ugh. Really? So I was like, this is interesting. So I didn't have a firm belief that yeah. I once had yeah. of if I drank again, it would, oh, I would just pick up, right? I didn't, my beliefs changed. Right, because so like I was they like, say I gotta see what this is about. I wasn't thinking about what I would lose, which is like going to meetings, you know, the connection with my higher power that is literally the driving force of my life. I, I didn't realize, 
I just, I thought about it. I shared about it in meetings. You know, I, I really did. I didn't just like randomly like, whoa, I'm just going to try it. It was like so conscious. I prayed over the wine. This was years and years and years ago. Whoa. And because you, when you went into the rooms, you were like wanted it all and knew you had a problem. Then you became, yeah, I you drank studied, what was it called again? You studied? Neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro-linguistic programming. And from there you changed your unconscious pattern your unconscious and the way that i drank and the way that you drank and your thoughts and your beliefs all changed in these five years of total abstinence Mm -hmm. so so now your mind and your subconscious mind is working differently now Mm -hmm. right and you decide and you think about it this is a conscious decision that you want to go out and because you believe that you can drink responsibly or normally. Yeah, I mean, there was other layers. I think had I been doing more writing and more inventory, I would have gotten down to what I thought drinking was gonna give me, which is more fun. I think when I was 28 years old, I had, I felt like I was just doing life. I'm, I'm just doing everything yeah. perfectly and I'm yeah. a little bit bored and I just want to have more fun. I'm 28. I'm not the same person. I'm not going to black out. Like I really just want to participate more in life. And I think I had kind of limited thinking about participating. Like if I'm not drinking, I'm less likely to go here. I'm less like, and I, I still would go out and have fun, but I never drank and I would always go home early and I would yeah. kind of sometimes not always feel a part of. And, I know that. And yet sometimes so powerful because I'm sober and I'm going home and I'm getting a good night's sleep. And But sometimes all your friends are getting a little tipsy and you could see the energy and you're not really a part of it. 100%. And it's like, damn, I'm going to go home now. Yeah. And you just want to like get crunked. I just wanted to experiment <laughs> and see what it, I, I was really, I was whisk. Bleh. It was a lot of it was about permission. It was like, I wasn't giving myself permission because I was afraid I was going to get in trouble if I drank. And I was like, this isn't healthy. Like, let me, let me give myself permission to drink again and see what actually happens. And I did for like four months. You said actually, actually, happens. I just wanted to actually it's, happens. Yeah. You know those like assholes who like have to point out yeah, yeah. when you say a word wrong. I, I hate like those it. people. No, I, I like hate them. <laughs> but you, you said actually. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Continue. I don't hate them. Aww. I don't hate them. Stop. We are not dating. Stop. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. Go. Actually happened. So it's- and what act what actually happened was. I drank here and there. I don't think I remember blacking out ever. It was what I thought it would be. The first drink, take me there. No, the first drink I had had half of, oh, I was with a boyfriend. Okay. We poured organic red wine in a thing. And was he sober, normie? No, he was normie in that Meaning he can drink normally. Yeah, (laughs) which I think if I were with dating an alcoholic at the time, a sober alcoholic, then I don't know if I would have drank. Maybe that guy would have propelled me, like, do some more writing. Let's get down to the what's underneath you thinking that alcohol is going to give you the freedom or give you the fun. Like, why aren't why aren't you having fun? Wow. That that would have been so in my learnings of the four months, I was like. Yeah, I am having some fun. It is fun. There's some liberation. It's the permission that's causing me to feel good is that I'm not tied to this thing anymore. Okay. And then eventually I was like, but I miss being a sober woman. I feel better in my body. I miss, I was, I haven't been praying as much. I miss my community. We need it as humans. We need community. Yes. We really yes. do. Yes. And I wasn't doing that. I mean, I guess maybe I had a different kind of community where it was like, I was like around drinking, but it, it just didn't do, it didn't affect me the same as it did when I was 22. You know, like we change a lot in the program. It we learn a lot. Better. It felt better. To you... be a sober person. Wow. I felt, actually felt more powerful being sober. And so eventually I got sober again because I was like, yeah, this is actually not worth it. Um, but when you took that first sip though, was it weird? Yeah, it was very strange, but it was also nothing. It was also like nothing. You didn't go like, oh shit. No. Because I tell myself this story, right? The story they tell you. The disease is doing push ups. And if you, and it's getting, and it's a progressive disease. And if you go out. Well, I think for most it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's why I don't share this in meetings because I think for most it is. Yeah. Most people aren't studying neurology and learning about hypnosis Whoa. for a potential career. That was going to be my career. Whoa. Had I not it was going to be a fallback career if my acting yeah. or comedy didn't make it because I was so fascinated by it because I felt like everything was changing around me and my body was changing and my beliefs were changing and I was like, oh my God, everybody has to know about this. This is life changing. Yeah. In the same way that I'm sure when you first got sober, I was like, everybody needs to do the 12 steps. Yeah. This is freedom. Yeah. It's like so amazing. Totally. And it's yes. such a gift. Yes. And I felt that way about hypnosis and NLP that... um uh, whatever, I got really excited about it. But but yeah, for most people in the program yeah. that are struggling with alcohol or drug addiction, it is life or death. Yes. They they yes. they are lucky that they found that room. Nobody walks into AA by mistake. Nobody's like, let me just see what it's about. It's it's usually the last house on the block and, and for most it is jails, institutions, or death yeah. is the next stop because they do pick up right where they left off because they don't have unconscious programs running that like things will be they don't have the neural pathways to drink less than they did before. They don't, totally. they're focusing on their, their husbands and wives and children and job that yeah. isn't about how to reprogram. Like, you know, so, so I think it's important to say that, that like for a lot of people, the dis-ease is doing push-ups because people do come back and they go, yeah, it was worse than when I first got here. And I'm just so grateful I made it back. But that wasn't your, your experience. And, and so, four months you were out but you realized in that four months you didn't did you see a progression at all was there yeah cravings here and there mm -hmm. okay and then at what point did you go i missed the community i felt more powerful like what was that yeah moment? i think well i think alcohol for my body yeah. i have the i think i have the allergy yeah so I, meaning I have an abnormal reaction to alcohol. Abnormal yeah. meaning I'm the one out of 10 people that when I drink, I am like, I feel alive and I really love the effects and it just does something to me. Yeah. So yeah. like my mom doesn't have that. She will have like a sip and she's like, I'm tired. And I'm like, whoa. Like, so alcohol still affects me differently. Yeah. Chemically. Right. So like, even though I may not be drawn to have 10 anymore, that first drink still makes me feel like, okay. So even in those four months that I drank again, I started making an association to alcohol being fun and loose and a part of. So naturally I wanted that feeling again, because yeah. I still think I like excitement. Oh, same. So yeah. Yeah. after a while, I'm like, uh oh, this is, this could get bad. This could. I don't know if it would be 10 years, 20 years, yeah. maybe five months. But like after four months, I was like, this, I'm starting to use this as a crutch and I don't want that. And so I, again, I miss my community. I miss praying and I was a lot more clear headed and I, I, I want that back. So wow. in order for me to do that, I need to not drink anymore. It's just such a fascinating story to me because I don't really hear it. And it's not most people's story. No, it's not. And I would never speak on that in a meeting because yeah. that's actually not effective for the people that are five days or 12 years to go. Because then I don't want, I would never want anyone else to think maybe I can drink again if Manon did it. But the thing, because that's not true. And, and also the fact is you went back in the rooms and you were like, I'm happier, sober and it didn't solve my problems. And actually I don't need alcohol as a permission to have fun. Like, yeah. I, and so, and my ego goes, dang, if I would have just written a little bit of more inventory, maybe if I had been sponsoring someone, maybe if I was forcing myself to pray for the courage to go to karaoke or do the things that I think are fun that I'm missing out on, I wouldn't have lost my time and I'd have 12 years today. Right. You know what I mean? Like my ego loves that 12 years. That being said, yeah. when I came back, there was a refresh button of, you know, when you're first there and you're new and you're just like, for me, there was this curiosity and this willingness that I had that over time, man, and develops this, I'm sure a lot of people, this happens to a lot of people, but I developed this like, yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. And that shuts me off from any additional information. So I'm trying, what being new does, they say like, start over without drinking mm -hmm. is it, it humbles you to go. I'm curious. Just tell me the way. 
Mm. Cause that's the best place to be is to be yeah. like, I don't know anything. Yeah. Cause then you could have access to everything. Yeah. Rather than what we think we know. Totally. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So you found when you came back as a newcomer, that was a gift. Yes. Because you got to experience it. I was like, oh, it. I don't know if I would have gotten to get this if I didn't go out. Wow. I mean, I've heard many people say, you know, you don't have to drink to start over, but I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I really enjoyed starting over. Yeah. It made me realize a lot of stuff that I wasn't looking at. Yeah, totally. A lot. And I got to grieve stuff that was current that I didn't even know was upsetting me. Wow. Because I guess I was that good at covering it. I don't know. Wow. You know? It was beautiful. Because it, it like reinstated me to, to be back in and like call people and something I wasn't really doing at five years. The other thing I think is cool about 12 step is that it's not just for alcoholics. No. It's literally, there's a program for honestly anyone. Like Al-Anon is great for friends and family members. Like if you have any friends or family members that are suffer from addiction, you qualify for that. There's like what, gambling, sex and love. Which, by the way, I went to SLA. Have you ever been to SLA? Mm -hmm. Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. Definitely don't feel like I'm a sex addict, but I do feel the love addiction. I definitely feel that. You know, just making my partner my higher power sometimes or like prioritizing romantic love over everything. I have more of a love addiction than I do alcohol. Isn't it wild? And by love addiction, meaning um, if I have a good man in my life and he loves me, there's no better feeling than that. But like, that's, it's scary because what if something happens to him, you know? It's like, yeah. it's, it's a pretty crazy addiction, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I mean, I, w I don't, yeah. I mean, luckily I spent a lot of time single in my sobriety, so yeah. I became my own partner first. Yeah. To where I, like, yes, yeah. I'd be devastated if Johnny were gone, but I, but you, Being that I got through my marriage, I'm like, I'm good. Oh my God, you can get Forget through anything. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think that was because of the time I spent single going, you know, <sighs> I spent a lot of time like this, like, man, and I got you, I got you. I'm going to become a good mother. Like, I was like, I'm going to become my own best friend, Whoa. my own mother, <gasps> so that I won't need anybody. Uh, and that they just occur to me as like a gift in my life. So yes, I would be devastated if I lost Johnny. It would be really hard. And I know I'd be, I'd be okay. You'd be okay. Yeah. You Aren't really you would. okay? I am. I'm actually okay. And it's I'm kind of phenomenal because you were with Stephen for eleven years, and I'm okay. And I was single for like the first, God, eight months of that separation, and then I started seeing someone. <laughs> it's not men. No, we're not. It's, it's not, not, not the one literally. That she's not. We're not. We're not. This is not an announcement. Baby. I'm not. I didn't get her. I'm pregnant. pregnant. I'm not. It's a man. She's baby. literally with a. We're not we dating. literally love men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like here's the thing. Like we love, love men. We're men. straight women. Straight. Straight women who love. She's seeing somebody else. Dick. I'm not me. Okay. I love it. So, we love it. We're not. We're not together. Guys, stop! <laughs> stop picturing. Me. Literally, honestly. Stop. Oh my God! If you don't time. stop right now, On what? Wednesday. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> oh my God! It's so fucking you're, weird, dude. I'll be honest. I. You said you're seeing someone. Yes, and like I haven't. I already know, but I'm, like, <laughs> I'm acting for this. Like, wow, this is interesting. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You said what? You, you said what then? You said you said who? But yeah, no. And he, is it a he or a she? Well, it's or? odd. It's odd because um, I've not been able to talk about it. Nor do I want to go into too much detail because I kind of like the privacy of it. Like I think you know, Stephen and I were just everything was out. We were both in front of the camera, and like it was just so public, and that's fine. But f there's something nice too about it just being like kind of totally private and I didn't feel comfortable or like open to talk about it and now Stephen and I are at this point where he's telling me about people he's seeing and I can be open and honest with him and that is like the best thing ever I mean we may, we might not agree on everything and lord knows we don't lord knows we don't 
Okay. Lord knows you don't agree on everything. Lord knows we got different views on different things, okay? But you know what? I accept him as a human, as a father of my children. Yeah. And now we're at this point where we're open and honest and we're able to say, you know, I'm seeing this person, I'm seeing this person. Well, how, how is she with kids was my first question. Mm. Oh, she's really maternal. She, she was a nanny for a long time. Do, 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 And I was, I was weirdly pleased about that. Oh my God, she loves kids. This, this could be good. Who knows? Just, we were just open. And, okay, I'll stop with the accent. You told me this mm -hmm. and I started crying. Remember? Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> I was so happy that the two of you were able to be open and honest with each other. Yes. Because what that does is create such a stronger bond. Oh my God. And you said that you guys felt closer than you had in a very long time. Yes. Because the jig is up. Yes. Like, let's just be real. Let's just be real. And that, I think that comes into what Marissa was saying about have a best <sighs> friend because best friends tell each other everything and they get, they, there's like nothing held back. And there's something about couples that sometimes if, if straight away, then all of a sudden they stop, they start withholding and oh, my partner, there's these causes and conditions with partners or something. Yes. It's like, no, 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 no. They might react to it, but tell them and see, see how it actually will bond you closer. Uh, well, that's wild. And I feel like I'm experiencing that in this relationship of, I've never been able to just kind of say what's on my mind fully in a safe way, like all my fears or insecurities or just anything, just being totally vulnerable. It's kind of amazing. I mean, you and Johnny are like amazing at that. It just, you got, yeah. you, you're so, you're so rigorously honest. With yeah, him. it's a little too much. It's a lot, it's man. It's a lot. I need to cool it. But he finds but you it amusing. Don't. I kind of love it. He finds it amusing. We play it. with it. It is what it is. It's it, dude. Like it's it a, makes us laugh. He he he's such a good tussler with the energy that he just teases me about how honest. He's like, well, I didn't, you know, need to know. <laughs> but he doesn't actually get offended because yeah. he's not insecure. You know, because he has self-esteem. Yeah, because he has self-esteem. Because he believes he's enough, and so he doesn't need kid, your validation no. to to know that Sometimes he's enough. He does. Sometimes, he needs Sometimes a little, he's like, "Can you just say something?" Just and I'm say like, it. "Yeah, you're amazing." But Sometimes he does because yeah, he's human. Every, he's human. Yeah, especially men, they need verbal. Um, uh, what is it? Affirmation, like appreciation. Yeah. that's like yeah. a big thing about what. Remember what she said about respect and like, oh, admiration. That was really That was huge. That so is absolutely why men sleep with their secretaries. That was like, he's because they look up to it and their wife is at home like, you piece of shit. And they're like, well, I'm going to sleep with the one that thinks I'm great. But like, what is that? Sorry, but I don't blame these dudes. I'm on your side. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. like the <laughs> ultimate pick me woman. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Like, I totally get it. And I'll always tell you how amazing you are. But I also think, like, the women that are with these guys need to make sure that they're not resentful because it doesn't feel good. So I also think... But then it's... To, it's and vice versa. So vice versa. So then what, what does the woman need? Did she say again? So the man needs admiration and the woman needs what? Fingers. Okay. I don't know what the woman needs. <sighs> what do we need? See, that's, I need to know that's what I messed need up. and then communicate it to the guy. What did she say? She said that the man needs admiration and the woman needs... I, I bet you it's to feel was desired. Was it protection? Protection or to feel, or to feel desired. Desired. I'm going to guess that that's one of the things that women need. Like a, when a man desires you, you feel like, okay, I'm feeling seen. Like I'm feeling yeah. like... That's I exist, true. but if a guy is just like watching TV, that's like an unconscious guy, and then all of a sudden your attraction goes down because he's not seeing you. Like wow. that's why it feels so good to be like you're like, you know, amazing and like. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a form of admiration. Yeah. So then the three things she said you need in a relationship were sexual chemistry, chemistry, best friend, best friend, respect and, and affirmation res and respect and affirmation and ad admiration and admiration. So. And you feel like you and Johnny, I mean, you guys tick all those boxes, but you were saying when you initially got together, what? Well, uh, he didn't really work. Right. So I think I didn't have as much respect, unfortunately. And then, and then, and then he got, and a, then he got a job. He got a job. 
It was great. And then that... But I respected other aspects of him. Totally. So I don't know if I never had... I didn't... Yes, I wasn't like, oh my God, he's working. It, that That's just like a natural thing that like I think women can pick on if like a guy doesn't have a job. Yeah. But like I respected... There was so many things he had that I did respect that I was like, how is he like that? That I think it kept enough of respect for us to have a good relationship in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And I will say that I also like think that's good that like you haven't really... I don't know, that you wanted to keep it private. Yeah. Your new thing. Yeah. I did that with Johnny for like a year. Really? Yeah, because I was like, this needs to just be mine, and I don't want any added fluff of anyone's opinion on it before taking literally. it to the streets. No, literally. Because with the other guy that I married, I shared it right away, and then I got everybody's opinions, which seemed to be like, yes, you two are perfect. And I was like, yeah. And it, it kind of covered what was real. Holy shit. I don't like to admit that, but like looking back, I'm like, I don't want to, I want to see if Johnny and I can stand alone without anyone's approval. I want to see what is really here without anything. Wow. Totally. There's something really freeing about that. I think so. Whoa. And just taking it one day at a time. I just feel, I'm just so glad to be able to be honest. It was hard to withhold things from one another, yeah. you know? I mean, people lie because they don't want to hurt someone or they're scared exactly. of the person's reaction. Yeah. But it is manipulation. Five minutes. <laughs> we have five minutes. Let's make this good. What is it now? How have you been feeling in the world? How what? How have you been feeling in the world? In the world? How do you oh, feel right. in the world? Holy shit. What are you doing? How do you feel in the Am world? Am I doing what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Does it look the same? I don't know. I would assume so. Holy shit. Yeah. That's wild. That's why it hurts. Are you in pain too? Wait, why did you ask me? How are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm, I'm good. That's great. How are you? I'm great. Tired. Pregnant. Really? Yeah, I tried to go off coffee today and lasted one hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You tried to go off coffee and it lasted one, one hour. hour. Get up. And then I tried to you I had one. I had to drink a coffee and I drank it. <laughs> That's messed up. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, like, I want to use hypnosis to just, like, be able to get off coffee and not have it be a big deal. Well, I got to say, before we recorded, <laughs> not, <laughs> can we not be disgusting for a second? No. Before, before, um, let's just try not to laugh, okay. Before we recorded, I said to myself, I need a coffee if I'm gonna be able to do this. Oh. Then I thought about the hypnosis. So and did I, you say something else instead? I was like, I have energy. I don't need coffee. And it worked. Man, I'm telling that you, I feel full of beans right now. Wow. Like I feel so I feel so energetic okay. without coffee. It's because I affirm Try doing that in the morning. Oh girl, get out of here. Try doing that first thing after that. <laughs> now you gotta be you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Don't be crazy. You ever try saying I have energy in the morning without coffee? Get out of here. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> Ow, that hurts my lips. <coughs> oh. Because <laughs> the thing is, we don't need alcohol. We don't need anything. People think we're drunk. Do they? Probably or high. No. Or high. We are. Not with any Can substance. You Can you do this? <laughs> Can you do this? Wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now you go. Where did that character come from? Since third, third grade. Get out of here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What? What? I'd go around and me and my friend Audrey would go, what? What? 
I just love that it's continued on to your 30s, which by the way, <laughs> yeah. happy birthday. Thank you. How old? How old? You don't want to say it's know. getting there. I'll be honest. I oh, don't you don't know. know. I don't know. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Taste the biscuit. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of, of the biscuit. biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> Taste the biscuit. Why Taste do people sing like that in the 90s? The Taste the biscuit. Well, I don't know if yeah. I'm up and good enough. Or like, like and I'll be your grandchildren. Why did they all sing like that? What the know. fuck was that about? Well, it's now everyone's singing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I thought that I'd been hurt before. Before. What's foy? What's foy? <laughs> what is foy? Are you Australian? What's going on? So, last night I was channeling the baby. I mean, of course you were acting like I was, right? Okay. Like Johnny and I occasionally will act like the kid, yeah. and then we'll have thirty-minute conversations. So what I realized is as I was acting as this child, I had so many questions because my curiosity turned on again. And I was like, oh man, how do, I, how do I become so much more curious in the world and drop this persona, man, and that, you know, it's like, it just reminds me a lot of hypnosis and NLP of how can I, because we play all these characters and these characters have their own thoughts and they have mm. their own feelings and so much comes up from them. So let's say last night I was playing a character of a kid. The curiosity was so fun. And I was like, I want to be more f fun and curious as Manon. You know what I mean? And that yes. reminds me of like the newcomer feeling of like when you walk into a meeting and you're like, I don't know anything, so everything's possible. I love that. So when you channeled him, what did you say? Were you like, Dad, can, why did you name me this name? Oh my God, this Dad, is some is there, cringe shit curious, right here. I was just curious, is there any way that I could have food right now? And where does, why do we like food? And then he would answer, he's like, well, and then we thought, you know, it'd be cool to reverse it and just say, well, why do you think? Where do stars come from? Where do you think they come from? Do you ever do that? To my... Unborn baby? No, it's your actual kid born. Oh. You have kids? Do I? I think. Do you? Do I? Wait. <laughs> I do. Can you believe we've never been stoned together? Or, or drunk? Do you know what I'm saying? Isn't That's that what I'm crazy? saying. We don't need to be. Oh, hell no. Because we. <laughs> that would be insane. That would. Be... No, that would be trouble. We can just, we cha we're channeling it. I feel stoned right now. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. High on life. Because mm -hmm. I'm with my bestie. Feeling Best relaxed. -ies. Yeah. It's but nice. Do I ever ask my kids where I think stars come from? Actually, no, I, like, do you ever reverse? If they ask you a question, do you ever say, well, wh where do you think? Interesting. They're not at the age yet. I guess with Poppy, I've done that. Yeah. Poppy's a little chatterbox. So is Alfie, though. I'm going to start affirming that. We we're talking about how to talk to your kids mm -hmm. and program them because a lot of people will be in the grocery store and someone will come up and the kid will be like, you know, at mom's legs and the mom will be like, she's really shy. I'm and guilty the, of that. And then the kid hears it and is like, okay. I'm literally guilty of that. I felt so, the need to say like, oh, yeah, we don't. Have oh, to he do doesn't, that. you know, because I feel, oh. I don't know why I, I'm never going to do that again. I've done it before. I mean, I did that with my dog. I'm like, he's really submissive. I'm like, why am I why saying am that? Why am I saying that? Or like, they'll, he's gonna they'll listen. be like, hey man, what's your name? And he won't respond. Like he's, he's like, get out of here. Like he doesn't, he's not. He shouldn't have to talk to anyone he doesn't want to talk <laughs> right. to. Exactly. And it, I should we just We have the problem thinking I have to answer to this woman who's asking my name. Yes, exactly. Alfie doesn't want to, so Alfie's not going to. He's got it made. He's got it figured out. He kind of does. Like, I'm not just going to do what I, because other people are doing it. But what's, because... but what's really funny is like, if he wants like a freaking fruit bar or something, he'll be like, 
I want a fruit bar, please. I'm like, ah, oh, suddenly you can speak in a full sentence if it's his wants and needs, but he has no interest in like conversating or like. Oh my God, I kind of get it. <laughs> I know, right? I don't want to talk to people I don't want to talk to. But I want to order frickin' fruitcakes. I want what I want when I want it. You so know? So be it. I kind of get him. I get him. For Is he sure. our spirit animal? Mm hmm. Alfie. 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 <laughs> what else? Anything else? That's all I have for That's you. That's it? I boob sweat. Until fucking tomorrow, because I'm sure your ass will be back. Tomorrow? <laughs> Manon's back all the time. We're going to be doing this when all we're 80. All the time. See, we're affirming that we're going to be doing this till we're 80, we, so we will be. Yep. I love that. I am enough. What are they again? Let's, let's out it with this, guys. Everyone say it. Say it with us. I am enough. I'm lovable. I am deserving. I am significant. Ooh, I'm, I'm significant. I matter. I matter. I love and approve of myself. I love and approve of every myself. Every day in every way my life gets better and better. Every day in every way my life gets better and better. All is well, and I am safe. Hmm. I love I am safe. I love all is well. Oh, all is well. And I am safe. It feels so good. Doesn't it feel so good? You know, words are vibrations, and those vibrations sound good. Dude, in my they vibration. sound so good. I like the title of her book, too. Tell yourself a better lie. It's like, if That's you're going to... the gonna, title of her book? Yeah, if you're going to lie to yourself and say horrible things, like, why not say which is the truth that you are enough, but like, why not tell yourself a better story? I don't know why. I don't know why. Why? why I don't lie? know why. Why lie, Chris? I don't know. I don't know why. Well, I think people have a resistance to saying the good thing to themselves because it's unfamiliar. It's not because it's not true. Yeah. So if I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm smart, but I don't really believe that. I don't, why, why would I say I'm smart? Mm -hmm. I don't actually believe that. Like, I shouldn't be saying that. It's not that I don't believe it. It's that it's an unfamiliar saying. Mm. So if once we wrap our head around that this is not about you not believing it, this is, you're having resistance to it because it's different. Wow. I love that. Okay, so start, like she said, start to get familiar with it. Did we just figure out? And that is fake out? it before you make it. <laughs> fake it till you make it fake is it making it familiar. And eventually, by the twelfth day or the hundredth time that you say it, you might go, oh, this feels good. This feels real. This feels accurate. Ugh. And then it becomes your truth. What's your main one that you want to program into you right Chris now? Chris is thinking about this. Or he's thinking Chris about is what he's thinking order about it. For Chris later. is the ultimate skeptic, but I can see us slowly chipping away at his skeptic ass brain. He's like, I could maybe. No, I can't. Yes, I can. I can get behind. No, I can't. Yes, I can. Maybe I can. Nah, this is stupid. Well, no, something it's not. will have to happen that forces him to do it. You don't change. A lot of people don't change until they're in enough pain. Ah, so we need to make like, Chris get into more we pain. Don't have, we, we don't need to create more pain <laughs> for Chris. A lot of people don't realize they can just hit rock middle. Okay. They don't have to hit rock bottom, Chris. <laughs> Chris, Chris needs to hit rock middle. What's it like? Did you just make that up? No, oh, okay. I heard it once. Damn, I like that. I know, rock I middle? wish I could take ownership, but. Rock middle? Rock middle. I like that. What's your, what's your like main, and then we'll be done. What's your like main affirmation that you want to program into you? Like, where do you feel that you're struggling right now that you want to fix or affirm or get rid of us? I can't talk. What's your, what's your primary self-limiting belief that you feel like you want to squash squash? No, I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to believe that I could eat squash, eat squash. at any time okay. of the day. <laughs> okay. 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 I, 
Well, I gotta say, when she said, say I'm significant, that really hit me because I've been saying I'm insignificant for 10 years. Whoa. And I think it's held me back in, um, I mean, obviously there's things that I do that sometimes make me feel like I am significant. Yeah. Or if someone comes up to me and they say something, I'm like, oh, that made me feel kind of significant in that moment. But quickly I go, well, I'm nothing. I don't matter. And also that's getting your significance from an external thing. And we know that that doesn't work. So the feeling of significance has to come from you inside, not from the stranger coming up to you or not from doing a good job at work or not from getting praise or validation or sexual attention from your partner, but it's got to come from inside. That's literally the only way, right? Yeah, that's the most effective way is for you to feel it inside, I will say. But what I'm saying is I got so much out of in my life telling myself I'm insignificant. Okay. I got so much freedom from saying the opposite that I started to really believe that like I really don't matter. So okay. like whatever I do doesn't matter. So that actually helped me be like very free in the world. I, I don't see. walk around the supermarket going anyone's, oh my God, like Johnny would always be like, oh my God, sometimes I just feel like everyone's staring at me. And I have a character, that think girl who thinks everyone's looking at her because I find it so ridiculous. Because I, I would assume when I walk out there, nobody's looking at me, nobody cares because I've repeated the opposite of what Marissa said. Whoa. I've, I've repeated, I don't matter, I'm insignificant because it took a pressure off of me. It served you for a bit. You it needed that. It served me. It was yeah. so nice. I was like, thank God, because I felt like the pressure and the weight of the world was just like, too much because I was yes. my only child. And so it served me and yet I go, oh my gosh, I wonder if I really felt like I affected people on a deep level or I was significant, what more I could do in the world. Like I had some resistance, even when she said it, I was like, yeah. no, 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 I'm not significant. And I was like, oh my God, that's my hiccup. That's a hiccup I have. That's a limitation. Whoa. Like I often feel like nothing I do matters. So I often do nothing. Wow. And that is, in my way. I would love to feel like I have unlimited energy. I would love to feel like I, what I do matters in the sense of, so that I could just be doing more. Like I could just have more to give away. Yeah. Do you more know what I give. mean? Absolutely. Yes. Cause I do feel like when I'm asked a question, that's what propels me to answer, but left to my own devices, I'm not going to go out there and start sharing what I know or what I've learned even though when I do that, it's so fun. So fun. You know, but, th and there's this, there's a belief that, oh, I don't work hard. I don't like to work hard. I'll just, I don't, it, what, what's the point anyway? So I want to get rid of that. So yeah, so now it's changing that to I, and it's not even working hard. It's like, I choose to love my work or like I choose to work consistently, or you could say hard, but hard feels negative, like hard. right? Yeah. I choose to work I take action. I love taking action back to And that. I choose to love it. And I choose to love it. You're making that, I'm choosing to love it. I'm choosing to work consistently and I'm choosing to love it. Something like that. It's just coming up with a new yeah. story. I have I a fear. That. I also think I've had a hesitation and fear of rejection. Yeah. So like sometimes I won't put myself out there for what I think I really want. Well, actually I'll convince myself that I don't want anything. So yeah. then I'll just take what comes and it's amazing. But like, I also yeah. feel like there's so much more I could have done. Mm. So have, if I was more proactive and I didn't have a fear of rejection and I was like, oh my God, everyone is so happy to hear from me all the time. Then I would probably bang down people's doors more and be like, I have a show. Yeah, totally. Whoa. I or I'd be that. on stage, like, they got to hear me. But I'm yeah. like, no one needs to hear me. Like, what is that part? I'm like, get her out of here. I want to feel like, no, I'm going to help. I'm going to raise the vibration of the room tonight when I go and do stand up. That's going to be so fun. And I'm going to touch, like, I want to look at it like it's exciting and that it matters. And instead, I'm like, it's going to come and go. The 10 minutes is going to go. Like, I have such a, there's this character in me that's like so... I identify with that. What's the point? I, I totally oh. feel that. But she, she really simplified it in that, like, Everyone, you just kind of got to pick one thing you're good at and just do that. And that's the thing. It was interesting. She said, that's the thing you do from like seven to 14, whatever that thing is. That was really interesting to me because I wonder like, that's just an interesting age range to go like, huh? Like, what was I drawn to in that? I don't know, but it's like finding the thing you're good at and that you love and just doing that. Like, it doesn't need to be a million things. And so for you, is it's that, like my dancing, it's dancing and making people laugh. Yeah. And you're doing those things. 
You're literally doing them. Yeah, not enough though. You've always said, keep making more dance videos in your car. And I'm like, nah, one's fine. And you're like, no, keep repeating it. <laughs> yeah, but let's not judge ourselves okay. either for it. Um, you know, you're doing an amazing sorry, job. Sorry, Manny. You've worked really hard. What do you guys, what's a self-limiting belief that you want to change? Write the self-limiting belief and then what you can change it to in the comments. That'll be interesting to read. What's yours? I actually identify with the significance thing, like the just, I've scaled way back and um, not been like doing comedy sketches like I normally do. Like I, 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 I like the podcast, it's super fun, but like there's a part of me that misses the characters and the comedy, things like that, so. Oh my, think about you know. what we could be actually doing together individually with characters. Yeah. On a, day, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Like, the amount of content that can come out of all these characters and yeah. funny sketches, there's so much in there. I know. And it breaks my heart to think that I'm not doing that every single day that I'm awake. Yeah, but that's okay, because you're more than that too, though, you know? But yeah, I do hear you. But I get so much from it yeah. when I do do it. That's yes. the thing. Yes, yes. Anytime I'm filming, I'm like energized. I know. It's the best thing ever. That and then like, honestly, this sounds dumb, but I've been really scared of my memory. Like, I think my dad having dementia, I just have this fear that I'm gonna have it. And I have been telling myself, oh, I have a, I've always told everyone I know, I have a bad memory, I have a bad memory. So I'm, I honestly never wanna say that again. Yeah. And I'm gonna start affirming that I have a great memory. Okay. And I'm just gonna see if it makes a difference and take actions that will help so my great. brain keep exercising yeah. so I don't. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I have a really good memory. I need to do that too. I have a great memory. I keep saying preggy brain. Right. She, like, right. I'm so, articulate and uh -huh. I can think of things quickly and I have a great memory. And I have a great memory. Oh, it feels so good to hear you say you have a great memory. I have a great memory. That's what were we so just talking nice. about? nice. I don't know. I have no idea. How did I get here? I don't know, but let's go eat potatoes. Is this a couch? We're going to go eat potatoes. Where and are when we? When we say potatoes, we name? don't mean... We don't you mean... You guys, we're not... We're Yi. Literally, we're not. Stop. Stop Literally, that. stop saying that. Like, we didn't even <laughs> say it. What? Shut up. Follow me. Follow Manon for more. Bye. Thank you. Like and subscribe.